There's a group of fireworks hotshots who call themselves GFA Pyro. I love when my guys get excited. I get to blow stuff up for fun. They're a small company. If they want to be number one, they'll have to blow away the competition. I need more shell now. Let's go. One explosion at a time. I'm a pyro. If you see me running, run. This time on pyros. You see, you can see people right there. Sebastian mounts an all-out assault on Vancouver's waterfront. And two days, 17 shows. That was module 11, by the way. GFA is off the rails. We got an old break. That one should be B. You've, okay, so, no, that should be A. Sebastian Hua is nowhere near ready to shoot tonight's show in Vancouver, but time's running out. Yeah, there's definitely a problem. Okay, retest. Okay. A tugboat is already hauling his pyro barge out to the launch site. Nothing. Okay. I think it's a continuity problem we have here. I think it's created by a bad cable. The question is, which cable? Double check line eight. Lack of continuity means that the circuit is not complete, which means that nothing is going to fire. Brian hasn't worked with Sebastian before, but they'll have to think as a team to solve this electrical glitch. OK, you got that for A, all right? Hang on, checking A. He, uh, he looks a little bit uh, anxious. Where to leave the papers? Where I leave the papers? Your paper. Are you? Okay, so we're doing E. Thirty minutes till launch time. Adding to the stress, tonight's audience is a tough one. A thousand members of an international electricians union. Yes. It's Yo, okay, B. Exchange. All right. A crowd of wiring wizards who will have no sympathy for this kind of screw-up. He is completely dead! Okay, I will uh, cut this patch. Okay. And go at, straight at the other one, okay? All right. Turns out, all the cables are good. We're good! We're good, okay. So where is the problem? Sebastian zeroes in on one suspect patch box, or module. Man, it's older than me. I don't trust this box. I just want to change the old tank for a new one. Do we have an extra one? We've got two extra patch boxes. Do we have enough time? Oh, we're going to have to make time, aren't we? Uh, we're not even in position yet, so... The it... show is at nine? Yeah. Seb is gambling the patch box is bad. Okay, go, yes. It will take until showtime to swap it out. If he's wrong, he'll be out of time and ideas. No, make sure. Patch make sure the system's powered down. Changing uh, one uh, patch means I have to pull out 45 line. I have to change all of them, uh, but not alone. Eh? What? How about you pull the wires out and hand them to me, and I'll plug them in. 50. 50? Yeah. At T minus 20 minutes, the operation begins. 49. 49. Okay. No, man, sorry. It was uh, 40 and 39. The barge stops. This is the convention center? Yep. It's the blue thing. 30? 30. All right. 23, 12, 8, right. 4, four. One. Have you got it connected? No, give me a second. All right. Okay. All right, standing by for test. If this new patch box doesn't fix things, Sebastian is going to have some explaining to do to the electrician's union. OK, retest. Gentlemen, we have a show. 45 line in 15 minutes. 
You want to pump? Oh, 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 oh. This is how we do it in the West, huh? <laughs> Copy that, one minute away. It's showtime. The electricians are all ready for a high voltage main event. Brian will have to fire each cue manually, guided by a pre recorded voice that runs in sync with the music. going well, but for the pyros, the launch pad is less than ideal. Space is tight on the barge, so Brian has to sit right next to the exploding mortars. Very close, man. Uh, maybe too close. I think I have not enough protection between Brian and the shells. When everything goes well, it's good, but if one six-inch shell blow in this tube... Burning debris pelts the barge. We are so close. It's a golden rain. Got hit with some fallout. They were problem solving down to the last minutes, but Sebastian kept his cool and made his deadline. I've worked on some shows that have been fairly tight. I've never worked on one that's you know been that tight. Even if you have a problem one hour before the show, <laughs> stay calm. It's only a blanket. It's not me. But the limits of Seb's calm under fire will soon be put to a bigger test. On GFA's next job, back in Quebec. It's a week later at the company warehouse near Montreal. <laughs> Sebastian has been working hard for days, preparing for a major event. Yesterday, the floor here was full of mortar rack and uh, look now it's it's empty it's a lot of labor it's a lot of mortar rack i'm tired <laughs> tomorrow is saint jean baptiste day in quebec it sparks more passion and emotion than any other holiday Saint Jean Baptiste is a huge holiday for Quebecers. The celebrations are going to blow the roof off every town in the province. Starting tonight. When people are proud, they, they blow fireworks in the sky. All good Saint Jean Baptiste festivities end up with the uh, fireworks. GFA has taken on a huge challenge. Over the next two days, the company has to launch 17 different shows. Eight tonight, nine tomorrow. It's like Christmas. I am the Santa Claus. <laughs> it's crunch time. Sebastian has got to have all the trucks on the road in an hour, and he still has two more to load. He's only got one option. Camille, the technician, wants to load the, his truck by himself. Camille is a freelance pyro who's eager to make a name for himself at GFA. 
You know, Camille is a long time technician. If Camille wants to load his truck, okay, but please do a good job. Every truck uh, leaving this place uh, complete. Sebastian has personally overseen the loading of eight of his nine trucks. The only one he hasn't had time to check is Camille's. Good. And Sebastian is going to regret it. The new Discovery app is available now, giving you the... Saint Jean Baptiste Day is the biggest holiday of the year in Quebec. No, sir, no. For GFA Pyro, it's their biggest logistical challenge ever. Sebastian has gotten tonight's eight shows loaded and out the door. Time to go. Now he's got to make sure they all go off without a hitch. The biggest show tonight tops off a concert in a park in the suburb of Repontigny. Hugues Lalonde is running this one. He's a jack of all pyro trades, but he specializes in flames. Did many, many jobs in my lifetime, but the only constant one was the pyrotechnics. You touch it once and it sticks with you for the rest of your life. Oog likes a challenge, but this is more than he bargained for. All the other experienced pyros are spread thin on tonight's seven other shows. Start with the four inch, which are the green ones. So you can Oog has been given over a thousand shells to set up and just a handful of rookies to help him. We do need to rely on the rookies, so it's a crash course because it's a busy, uh, busy period. Would it, but I don't have enough tens. Two fives make it ten. They have to spot check their work just to make sure everything's plugged in at the right place. So yeah, it's more work for me. Melanie Bissayon is a complete greenhorn, and it shows. Okay, just uh, try to hold it. At the end, you get more leverage like this. I have never drive a nail with a hammer. Just hold it at the end. And try to hit the nail. Hug <laughs> is three hours into his setup. He should be loading shells by now. But he isn't even finished putting up his mortar racks yet. 20 kilometers upstream is the next biggest show, at the town of Terbonne. The pyro is on one bank of the river. On the other side, 8,000 Saint Jean Baptiste partiers will be watching. This is Camille's show. His team finishes unloading the truck quicker than expected. And then realize why. There are 18 racks missing, I think. It's even worse than that. Camille admits he's missing 30 racks. He made a mistake loading his truck and shortchanged his own show by almost half. The mortars are uh, where the bombs are going. So if we don't have any mortar, we can launch the bomb because there's no cannon, there's no anything. It won't, it won't launch in the air. Mandatory part. <laughs> no mortar, no fire. <laughs> they call the boss, Mode Furtado. And she calls Sebastian. We oui, Mo. I don't know what happened, but uh, Camille completely missed his load. He didn't read the right number. He didn't put what it was needed in the truck. They were missing a good quantity of mortars. Oui, ça. Too many mortars to be a respectable mistake. I mean, it was a big mistake. We'll not discuss this today with him, but of course, eventually, uh, okay. we'll have a small talk. I was uh, speechless. I leave Camille to load this drop, and it was bad. Sebastian was on his way to help with another show at the town of Bromo. Now, he's got to race back to the warehouse for Camille's forgotten mortars. 
and drive them 70 kilometers to Terrebonne through traffic. Stay calm, Sebastian. <laughs> Stay calm. Back in Repontigny, if I look in the distance, I can see it's coming. Hugh soldiers on with his rookie crew, showing them how to protect mortars against rain. Once I know it's solid, then I just flip it over so I get a glue side out. And then all you have to do is stick your plastic to the tape. Thank you. He's getting a lot of teaching done. The work, not so much. Sebastian has made it back to the warehouse. He grabs Camille's forgotten mortars and goes. Move, people. I need to go at Terrebonne. Mid-afternoon, Eric Cardinal, GFA's co-owner, stops by at Repontigny to check on Hugues progress. Exactly. And then all fires. Yeah, exactly. Being part owner of the company, I want to make sure my, good, my shows go well. Oog is the boss of this site. But Eric is Oog's boss. You, you want me to set him up there and the, the, the racks of five at the end? or Keep module the... seven at the back. So You'll figure it out. Yeah, I, I just wanted to see what you had in mind. It's always hard, you know, when you have two experienced uh, pyrotechnicians on site. He comes in, he's used to leading his shows. I come in, I'm used to leading my shows. The bomb came in a bag. Yeah, so you can take it out. They come like that from the factory. So. Yeah. It, that really doesn't hurt to keep them. OK. Sorry, Egg. Your tubes are dry. <laughs> Don't need the bag. The technicians were getting mixed up from the different information they were getting from Eric and me. Competition showed they'd get in the bag every single Yeah, time. but if you set up and they're going to stay there for three days, of course you put everything in a bag. We're supposed to leave tonight after the oh, show. Oh, good. I think that's the plan. He's a hard-headed guy, so am I. So sometimes he has ideas that aren't exactly the same. There's too many chiefs, not enough Indians on this show. Eric decides to give Ugg some space and check in on one of his seven other shows. So I'll be back in about an hour and a half for... No problem. I'm very confident the work is continuing fine with them. But the work doesn't continue for long. The rain comes and shuts you down. We're going to bring on the product in the truck. We're going to open the cakes, get them out of their wet box, protect the product and the gear first, then think about yourself. They wait it out in the trucks. Sebastian finally arrives back at Terrebonne. We made it. Now it's time to work. There you go. Camille's people set up the last of the mortars. Sebastian starts wiring and gets an ugly surprise. That good. The numbers marked on the mortars don't match the ones on the plan. Seriously? Everything is mixed everywhere. It's Here's what happened. Loading fireworks is supposed to be like paint by numbers. The site plan maps out the size and location of each mortar rack. The pyros normally set up all the racks, then mark them with their queue numbers and unpack the fireworks. The crew just has to match the numbers on the shells to the numbers on the mortars. But Camille and his crew didn't wait for the missing mortars. They jumped ahead and started loading fireworks right out of the boxes. Whenever they got shells that didn't have a place to go, they simply renumbered an available rack. The more they did that, the more scrambled the setup became. Hey, man. Now the show is a mess, and the firing plan is useless. 
at this point it was impossible to reorganize everything because we just don't have enough time. It's a big mix up. GFA has never screwed up an entire show. But this could be a night of firsts for Sebastian. The show is at 10, but I don't think we will be there at 10. Day one of the Saint Jean Baptiste celebrations is looking like a washout for GFA. The company is stretched to the limit, trying to get eight fireworks shows off the ground, and two of them are headed down the drain. I would try to keep my smile, but actually I'm <laughs> pissed off. Sebastian has discovered a mess at Terban that's put the show way behind schedule. Nothing matches the firing plan. I'm searching for line 10. The setup was not good, with the queue number everywhere on the field. Mode has come to help him fix it, but they may not make the show's 10 o'clock deadline. The load is actually a catastrophe, because it's not in order. Set, set coming, okay. Just finding the shells for each queue eats up time. It's 8 o'clock, and less than half the fireworks have been wired. The show is at 10, but that will be hard to be on time. Much of amateur. At that public park 20 kilometers east in Repontigny, the concert is on. And as soon as it's over, Hugues Show has got to fire. But he's suffered too many setbacks, and he's not going to make it without Eric's help. Back to help uh, finish this show. But that means tough questions from Eric. So I see some stuff is not completely finished with Rashi. No, it's not like this. Oh, it is, OK. Now he wants to check Hugues' work. We have to really test it thoroughly so we make sure that all those little connections are perfect. I don't like testing too much. I have this kind of superstition that if you test too much, things go wrong. <laughs> we have modules that are not responding. The computer can't even detect eight of the modules. Half of Eric's show can't shoot. I'll go check. I'll go check. If they would listen right away, I asked them if all the numbers are right. Number one was number 11, so of course they can't work. He discovers that Oog's team has misaddressed the modules. It's a simple switch on the side of the module. They have a display from 1 to 99, and you give them the number you want. Oog, that was module 11, by the way. Module 9, module 11. If you work it precisely, thoroughly, I mean, the test will test 100% every time. I mean, when it doesn't test right, most of the time it's a human error. Who tests again. There are still two problem modules. 12 and 13, where are these? I like stuff to be done correctly the first time, of course, so we don't have to run around the rain and try to find the problem. Now, the computer says two other modules that were fine before have disappeared. The you box. checked module 17 for a queue, didn't you? We didn't even touch these modules. 17, 18 are the two last positions? Yeah, we didn't touch anything. Well, just playing with the wires, maybe uh, checking the module. Linked. They're not even linked. You want me to go check? I'll go. I just don't understand because we didn't touch anything from them. Yeah, but some so of the, a lot of people walking around might have tripped. When Hugh returns to the field, it turns out Eric was right. Yeah, I see someone's on it. They test again. Yeah, we're all good. Fire power is 100%. So we're good to go. Rapontigny looks back on track. But at Terrebonne, where the party is in full swing, Mode and Sebastian are still knee-deep in wires. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight line left, but it takes 
around 10 minutes per line. But, uh, it's gonna be tight, tight, tight. I don't think JFA has ever missed a deadline before. This one is written 17, but inside it's actually 26. Huh? They work frantically. I don't even count. Time is running out. Okay, it's 15 minutes. Eh? We're really, really, really late. There's no choice. It's the call no pyro wants to make. To tell the client they won't be ready to fire at 10 o'clock. Okay, c'est bon. Well, we don't like to delay shows. So that's not our goal. Actually, our goal is to be ready on time. Downriver, the concert in the park is almost over. Hugues gets ready to arm the system. And suddenly, I get this error message on the firing board. Okay. Where's Eric? Eric? 90 seconds away from uh, firing time, and Eric is nowhere to be found. It's, it's as if he's just vanished. Eric? You want me to go find yeah, him? Yeah, yeah. The last song is ending. Right, right now. But the firing system is still frozen, and the only person who might be able to fix it has disappeared. Eric. It's the eve of Saint Jean Baptiste Day, Quebec's proudest day of the year. When people are proud, they, they move fireworks in the skies. It's showtime, and GFA's two biggest shows of the night aren't ready. In Repentigny, Hugues' firing board is frozen. Eric. Eric knows the console inside out. But he's vanished. Eric? Where's Eric? Go for yeah, him. Yeah. All of a sudden, I got the message, so I came running back. J'ai fait autoload. Oh, hold on. I still need to firepower on, man. Eric tries resetting the system. Autoload. Very good. And the error message? disappears. That's the only moment that I really needed him, <laughs> like that 30 seconds in the day, that's where he needed to be there. And I don't know where he was. First fireworks of the night launch on cue. The shells and comets are firing exactly according to plan. The rain didn't affect the fireworks, so I'm happy about that. That's why we do our job for that 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> we fired a perfect show on, the, I think, the worst day of the year. Oh, that right was on a cue, right on that, cue, that, man. That, that, Good that, show. The little <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Perfect timing, perfect timing. At Terrebonne, the show hasn't even started. Sebastian and his team have been wiring non-stop. We asked them to delay the, uh, the firework display by 10 minutes. Is it finished, Leo? I think so, yeah. It's at 8 past 10. Tonight, another first for Sebastian. We're gonna fire the show uh without uh, testing it, because uh, we don't have a time. Sebastian has never fired a show without testing first. 
This kind of thing is not supposed to happen. It's crucial to test. It's one of the steps you cannot miss. You don't test, you start the show and nothing happens. But Maud and Sebastian are out of time. It's back in Camille's hands now. Whoa. Dude. Uh, zero. It looks like the pyros are back on track. So far, their cues are all firing. This is uh, the reward of our work now. But then, without warning, the show stops. Uh. Suddenly, boom, nothing. That's the moment where you're terrified because the rest of the show was not going to happen. Soon, someone will have to tell the crowds that this year's Saint Jean Baptiste fireworks are over. God, wow. Such a big black hole. Way too long. It looked like if it lasted half an hour. Hard to believe it could get any worse. And then it does. Oh, man. A six inch shell goes off course and blows up on the far side of the river, just short of the audience. By the time the show limps across the finish line, the pyros have had enough. Terbonne edition 2011 is done. But it's not over yet. The fire chief shows up and wants to know what happened. Uh, there, there uh, was a bomb that uh, fell in the water and exploded right there. So people got afraid. No one knows what caused the misfire. Human error or a product failure. But Mode answers for it. I'm the boss of all those people, so I take the responsibility personally. What a day, what a day. I'm not very happy about the way the show was set up, no. And I'm not necessarily happy about the result. You want to know what happened. You want to make sure that this will never happen again. GFA spread itself too thin on the first day of the Saint Jean Baptiste celebrations. This kind of thing is not supposed to happen. The company and Sebastian took a beating. Maybe at the end of this day, I will be. I will... This is day two the only chance to turn things around. Seb has got to make sure every one of today's shows goes right. Superman! <laughs> he stops in at the small town of Saint-Hubert. Oh, no. Where the show prep is looking rough. Not very good for a connection. <laughs> Two pyros, Frederick and Camille, are doing their first solo job. Where's the line of 10? Camille, do you know the line of 10, where it is? I don't know. Okay. Hey, Fred. It's my fault. You set up this mortar in the wrong post. Come on. Sebastian can't afford another Terrebonne. 
He's got to stay and try to get this show back on track. During this time, uh, everybody, uh, Mo, Eric, and uh, Benoit uh, are at Bromont uh, drinking probably a beer and champagne, and uh, I'm here in, in the mug. But at the Bromont golf course, nobody's relaxing. Maud, Eric, Benoit, and Philippe are setting up the day's biggest show. Smile, Phil. Smile, please. It's early morning, <laughs> and we, <laughs> we know that the day is going to be long. Eric designed this show. Benoit, GFA's resident artist, is going to fire it for him. You followed the plan, I like that. Yes, sir. All right. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> <sighs> the pyro safety perimeter stretches from one side of the course to the other. Did it have a meeting with security people, anything like that yet? No. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Security is a big concern here. GFA show is turning the golf course into a firing range. Curious intruders have to be kept out and there are no fences. On each module, you have 32 connections, and today we have 22 modules. Ooh, a new matchbox. Ooh. <laughs> Look how shiny and new and all yellow. You know, at night, maybe you watch porn, but we watch new module. Same. Oh, my baby. It's time for the big guns. <sighs> New modules aren't the only pyro porn in tonight's program. An inch. GFA is breaking out the largest shells allowed in Canada. There you go. This is the biggest. This is a 12 inch, 300 millimeter. This is super crazy heavy. It goes in that nice yellow gun that is dry. Philippe checks every mortar for rainwater. If any of the powder in a lift charge gets wet, it can lose its kick and cause a low altitude break. And the low break means that the shell still gets out the gun, but explodes low. So it's gonna make it the same effect in the sky, but on the ground. A low break can actually tip over nearby mortars. Shells could end up firing sideways like cruise missiles. So if this goes 1,000 feet this way, it can go 1,000 feet this way. It's gonna do big, big damage. The crowd settles in on all sides of the safety perimeter. On the A standby, 10 minutes before the first shot. Everyone wants to get close to see the big show. Philippe will be on the lookout for any spectators who try to sneak in and get too close. Sometimes people don't understand that fireworks is fire. So they just want to touch like babies, you know? Stand by, Phil. In 15 seconds, first shot. This is supposed to go about now, just about now. Five, four, three, two, one. From the stands, it looks like this show may be the victory mode and Eric need. It's nice to watch a show. Yeah. <laughs> For a change. But across the fairway, it's a war zone. The wind is blowing fallout everywhere. Philippe watches for trespassers. He was just walking around and looked just to make sure everything was all right. A movement catches his eye. Watch out. See, you can see people right there. 
and the big guns are about to fire. People have gotten past security and inside the perimeter. They couldn't have broken in at a worse time. Chop. We got an old break. Stay there, stay there, stay there. After 17 shows and a few failures, it was a bomb that went down, exploded right there. People got afraid. The pyros are battle weary. And their hopes of redemption rest on one massive show at the Bromont Golf Course. But Philippe has just discovered that spectators have broken into the security zone. You can see, you can see people right there. Their timing couldn't be worse. We got a low break. An eight inch shell misfires and detonates low, almost at ground level. Okay, I'm gonna go back. The shock waves knock over a whole mortar rack. They're pointed like cannons. No, 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 no. As a war zone, just changed from everything mellow to everything hectic in a few seconds. The pyros have got to isolate the damaged rack and shut it down, or shut down the whole show. Benoit sacrifices a whole rack of medium-sized effects. As soon as I saw those old breaks, I, I just cancel the cues of, of this rack. That lets him keep the rest of the show firing. For now. Philippe still hasn't caught up with the intruders. Anyone inside the firing zone is in danger. Ciao. Philippe knows it. Really had to chase those people away, and that was stressful. The intruders run out of harm's way. Yeah. People just thought they were in the perimeter. I think they got scared. <laughs> The show builds to its climax. Then, Philippe's big guns do their job. <laughs> the crowd at the Bromont Golf Course gets the best show. And the biggest thrill of this St. Jean Baptiste Day. exhausted. A lot of stress, a lot of running around. The client in Bromont, he loves fireworks. The expectations were high, so seeing him smile while watching the show meant everything. In Saint-Hubert, the show Sebastian put back on the rails is a success. It was a good show, uh, and uh, it was a good night. <laughs> Show's done. Reports fly in from the seven other shows. <laughs> All go off without a hitch. Saint Jean Baptiste is like a test. You test your boundaries, you test your limits. Thank you! Thank 
you. Given the circumstances, I think we did our best. And I think we can be satisfied. Then if I put Terbonne in the balance, oh, um, yeah, no, we need to do better, much better. Next time on Pyros. Water. Wait, 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 no. Wind. Oh! And fire. GFA prepares to launch a series of perfect shows. <laughs> but Mother Nature rips them apart one by one. Get back. Get back.